to order. Today is June 15th at 7 p.m. It's part of Township Municipal Building Courtroom, uh, pulling the Sparta Planning Board to order. So, uh, per the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of the meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. So, Diana, can you do a quick roll call for us? Here. 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 So as is customary, we'll do a quick salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Let, let the record reflect that Mr. Sylvester is here. All right. So we've got a couple of orders of business tonight. Uh, first, we'll do approval of minutes for March 2nd, 2022. Yeah, I have a few comments on, on that. Okay. Uh, the first comment is on page three, about two-thirds of the way down. It's, it says, uh, imported and processed on-site, the he noted warehouse. The he noted warehouse. That was one. On page five, uh, in the last paragraph, um, oh, the, the first line it says, "This to go and stated the will provide stated the will." And on page nine. So, which one? Are you on the March second meeting minutes? Yeah. March second, yeah. Okay. He said page five. Right? Okay, so page five. So these are. Yeah. Okay. Page full well, next paragraph, top of the paragraph. Uh, Dr. Parker asked if the depth to the aquifer that one. Yeah, yeah. It's further to the right on that same line. As you go and and it starts with Dr. Will. And then it goes on this to go and state in the will. Okay, so it needs to So we just need to amend that to say they will? Yes. Okay. And what's the next one, Ted? The last one is on page nine. The last word, he stated they are proposing a well. It's dwell, dwell warehouse. warehouse. On the next page, it's dwell. Where? And then on the next page, go to the next page, page 10. 10. It's dwell warehouse. That's correct. Which means the goods will stay there. Right. I didn't know if dwell was a correct word. Yeah. Those are my three comments. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion then, Chair, for your Sorry, opening statement. Yeah. That with the grammatical changes brought up by Mr. Ball, that these um, minutes be approved. Okay. Can we get a second? I'll second. Motion approved. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. <clears throat> Next is approval of subcommittee minutes from April 1st, 2022 to May 31st, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our next order of business uh, is approval of resolution. So this is application number 677, memorializing resolution of the planning board of the Township of Sparta, approving a two-year extension of the preliminary and final plate site plan and related sea variances and site plan exceptions approved by the JCB Development LLC until July 
15, 2024, related to Block 16003, Lots 1 and 2 at Aaron Way in White Lake Road and located in the ED zone, decided on May 18, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I recommend this to you at the prior meeting. I might have stated that they asked for one year, but they asked for two years, and two years makes sense and is appropriate. So this resolution confirms a two-year extension to the JCB site plan application for the statutory protection period. And all it is is memorializing that. So any party who voted yes on that motion previously can vote on this resolution. Is there a moving party? Okay. Diana, roll call, please. We need a motion. Oh, motion, sorry. I'll take that motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. I'll second. Diana, roll call, please. Council Woolworth, please. Yes. Yes. Council Woolworth, please. Yes. Yes. I was not present at that meeting, Diana, so I can't vote. Okay. Second resolution is application 693, memorializing resolution of the Planning Board of the Township of Sparta, approving the preliminary and final site plan application of 6 Aaron Way for tenant approval for the glass flooring systems LLC related to property known as Block 16003, Lot 3 at 6 Aaron Way and located in the ED district, decided on May 18, 2022. Can I get a second? I'll second. Diana, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay. So we're sensitive tonight. All right. So we've got three public, well, I guess three applications, one of which is just going to be a request of reapproval. Tom, did you want to? Yes, I can address the board on that. Mr. Hansen is working on recording his deeds of minor subdivision with his neighbor and just needs some additional time to finalize the title searches by the neighbor and the survey issues. And I recommend to you that you reapprove the minor subdivision of Mr. Hansen and grant the 190-day extension of the time to record the deeds of minor subdivision. Is there such a motion? I'll move. I'll second. Diana, roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Everybody's eligible on this. Diana. All the board members. Did you say me? No. Yes. 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 All right. Our next order of business is Nicolock Paving Stones, LLC, application number 697 for 482 Houses Corner Road, block 16005, lot 5. Mike, all your witnesses can come forward with you. If you need another chair, you can bring it. And we'll just do a couple of housekeeping items. Just want to introduce everybody to Victor Venegra, who is the partner of Catherine Samad and is here tonight in Catherine's place. She's on vacation, I believe. Welcome aboard, Victor. And also Tom Natowski is covering for Dave Simmons. And I'd like to swear them both in because they have not previously been sworn to testify in hearings. So this year at this board. So, gentlemen, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. And please state your name and address. The board will just confirm that the board recognizes and accepts the qualification of Tom Natowski as a professional engineer and Victor Venegra as a professional planner. So please state your name, spell your last name, and give us an address. Thomas G. Natowski, K-N-U-T-Z-L-S-K-Y. Business address of 17 Plains Road, Augusta, New Jersey. 
Victor Vinegra, V-I-N-E-G-R-A, professional planner, state of New Jersey, uh, 30 years experience over, uh, business office, 320 North Avenue East, Cranford, New Jersey. And I can't be Catherine, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thank welcome you. to you both. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, welcome aboard. And uh, so without further ado, we'll swear in the applicants, witnesses, uh, uh, gentlemen who might testify for Nicolak, please raise your right hand. And, uh, sir, if you, do you think you might testify? Yeah. So even if it's a possible answer. Sure. Uh, gentlemen, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Yes, yes I do. I do. Thank you. And please all state your name, spell your last name, and give us at least a business address. Roberto Nicolia, N-I-C-O-L-I-A. President of Nicolau Paving Stones, 100 Thompson Avenue, Babylon, New York, Long Island. Owen Dykstra, uh, Leather Barnes Road, Newton, New Jersey. And Jason Dunn, Leather Barnes Road, Newton, New Jersey. Thank you, gentlemen. And Jason, if you want to bring another chair up into the, into the press the bar, that's fine. And. Uh, the board recognizes and accepts the qualifications of Owen Dykstra as a professional engineer and the qualifications of Jason Dunn as a professional planner. Please go ahead, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Mike Lavery from the firm Lavery, Solange, Ever, Mighty, and Cohen, representing Nicolak Paving Stones, LLC. Uh, this is an application, as you know, for preliminary and final site plan approval, blocks 16005, lot 38, at 482 Houses Corner Road. Um, I have with me tonight uh, Mr. Dykstra, who is our engineer. Uh, we have Jason Dunn as the planner, and Mr. Nicolia, who is obviously the president of Nicolai Paving Stone. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Owen and just have him go through a general overview of the plan. Sure. Thank you. I'll give you a general overview of the plan. Um, the site plan is for Nicolai Paving Stones. Uh, it's application number 697. What I have in front of you is sheet 207 of the site plan. I did colorize it, so... Yes, that'll be A1. Okay. What we have is an existing 54 acres industrial site. It's block 16005, lot 5. It's located on Houses Corner Road, which is on the bottom of this map. This map is facing north as off. Uh, so behind that is North Village? Is it? North Village is to the, to the east. The chips on the corner of the places. Okay. <coughs> Behind that, meaning across the railroad tracks, is what Owens? Across the railroad tracks is the township water department. And, and the, the and Aaron Way subdivisions and the subdivisions. Park, Park Street and uh, Aaron Way. Yeah, so it's located in the Plan Development Resource Management Zone 1. And under that zoning, we have a planned economic development which allows for the proposed use and also the existing use. This is an expansion of the existing use. On the south of the property is Houses Corner Road. Um, below that is a rural residential zone. Um, it's Highlands Preservation Area, so it's very limited development. It's a large farm across the street, so there's really no impact to the neighbors across the street. There's some houses as you go a little further to the southwest on Houses Corner Road. Um, to the north is the recycling facility, the MRF, that was um, approved a, a while back. They gain access to the site through the driveway that runs through the middle of the property. Um, to the west is the NYSNW Railroad. That, that's the border on the um, west side of the property. And to the south is the Nicolai, Nicolai Sand Pit um, that Tom Co. now owns. Um, the current site was approved over time under the former Economic Development Zone. Um, the area along the Hazard Corner Road frontage is this area is screened with um, existing natural trees and shrubs, pretty mature. Um, it, it provides a natural buffer between the street and the properties across the street into this site. Um, there's a small shed located here. I, marked, I drew it in in orange so you can see it. Um, it was part of the farm. They usually keep the cattle in there as shelter, so that will be removed as part of this application. In the front of the property along Houses Corner Road is the solar farm. Uh, there's a number of the solar um, racks that don't have solar panels. If the town wishes those racks to be removed, they could be removed. Um, they have a lease with someone, so they need just a notification from the town <coughs> if they want them removed. Yeah, if the town would like them removed immediately. Then. Okay. Why did they pick them up? Why did they pick them up? 
Tonight we're requesting an upgrade to the Nicolac facility. The proposal is for a small addition to Building 3. Building 3 is the largest building that I mentioned before. There's approximately a 1,000 square foot addition at the northerly corner of that building. And the reason for that is interior of that building, the equipment gets very close to the walls and this squares it off and will allow for more movement around the interior. What, is, what building is that on? That's me. Building. Building number eight will be a 32,500 square foot facility. It'll have three 44 foot silos on the westerly side, and then it'll have a hopper and conveyor system to deliver product, to deliver raw materials into the building to create the product. Uh, the height of the hopper is 17 and a half feet. On the plan, it shows it above the retaining wall. After reviewing it farther, we determined it's better to put it below the retaining wall so we can load it from above. Stick way up. So that, that'll be a modification on the revised plans. The retaining wall is proposed to be reinforced concrete with a maximum height of 18 feet. That requires a side yard setback of 27 feet, and we've provided 50 feet. Um, the wall and hopper and conveyor integration is being designed by the structural engineering team. Uh, the conveyor system that will connect the hopper to the building will lift the raw material, bring it up above the driveway and across into the building at approximately 26 feet high, it'll enter the building. We've also provided circulation around the building, which um, we designed for a WV50 tractor trailer, and I can provide the uh, turning templates for that per Dave's request. The proposed impervious coverage will be approximately 30%, where 40% is allowed and all of the proposed improvements meet zoning setback requirements. There's a couple of existing buildings that are in the existing setbacks, however, they're pre-existing conditions. Um, 
interlock produces a permeable interlocking paver that we've designed the site with a state-of-the-art permeable paving system to address the stormwater um, front off on the site. The system has been designed to meet the water quality, water quantity, and groundwater recharge requirements of the stormwater ordinance. What's interesting in this zone, the planned economic development has a requirement that the planned developments provide stormwater management for and stormwater infiltration without any overflows from the site for the 210-100 year storm. It's a very um, high threshold and it's to protect White Lake and what have you. So we've designed this system, which is the portion of the property that's actually developed to meet that requirement so we don't have a discharge that runs off into White Lake. We'll be able to control that 100%. The issue is that creates a variance on this site is the existing pond. does not require wetland permits as the proposed improvements are entirely within the existing disturbed area of the site and there are no wetland areas within 150 feet of this area. We've requested a waiver of submission of an LOI and an environmental impact statement since the entire area of the proposed improvement is within the fully disturbed area. The proposed new building will result in seven additional employees for the total, bringing the total to 42 employees on site. The parking required is based on 122,500 square feet of building area, which would require 245 stalls. We're requesting a waiver to allow us to utilize the existing 66 stalls, which is more than adequate for the 42 um, employees on site. And we could also, there's the area adjacent to the existing parking lot that could accommodate banked parking for an additional 50 if in the future there was more. Uh, we'll provide a lighting plan for the proposed parking areas. Well, the existing parking areas, they don't currently have lighting. And those also around the uh, proposed building. That will be in accordance with the uh, zone ordinance. Um, their site has existing uh, power utilities running through it. Um, the underground power service runs under the proposed building. So uh, our applicant has met with JCP and L and they've discussed how they're going to reroute the power on site. Also, the power, the um, paver area goes under the JCPNL uh, power line easement and overhead easement. So we're going to get permission from them to have those improvements under there. Um, we'll be working with, through the details with the water department for the water system on site, and then we're proposing a new septic system for the new building. Both the fire departments and the police departments have reviewed the applications, and they have no um, comments that I need to respond to. That's kind of an overview. Happy to answer any questions. Are the professionals going first? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, Tom, do you want to go through? Um, sure, Mr. Chairman. I was following along <coughs> Mr. Dykstra was talking, and there's a couple things that, that stood out that I just want to comment on. Um, in regard to, I just want to confirm that the uh, uh, and these, um, reading, I'm actually referring from Mr. Simmons' report dated June 6, 2022, uh, for what there was a comment response uh, letter uh, provided yes. back for that, um, which had a lot of old complies, which we like to see. 
So, Tom, you're saying that the overflow will go into the upper pond? Yeah, right. basically, the, the, term, the entire design and the stormwater flow goes to that upper pond as part of the, the stormwater management design, and none of it was planned to go over to that, uh, the larger pond on the site in the middle. Um, so, uh, in terms of relief being requested, uh, they're not requesting relief from that upper pond. It's the middle pond where all the drainage goes to now. That's the way you said. There's a stream that runs to it, correct? There's a stream that comes out of the high, the preservation area down here and fills that pond. So, if you got, if I understand what you just said, so help me here if I'm saying anything wrong. So you have a stream that's feeding that right now, and what's its capacity right now? Its capacity, it won't overflow until it hits the hundred years storm event. Okay, so it's going to be able to handle the current load, the stream that's feeding it. And then the overflow from the smaller pond as well? This pond discharges to the north. It doesn't discharge through here. So this one comes through and actually flows over land through this area down to the railroad. And yes. where does that one discharge to? We have no discharge from that one. That just, okay. And so no, there are two no new development. No new development being directed to the pond closest to Hobbs Corner Road, is that correct? That's correct. The one that we're asking the variance for, we're not asking that any of our storm water goes to that pond. Okay, I just want to make sure because... So, so Owen, as a, as a professional engineer, did the stormwater management plan, are you satisfied that your plan will not negatively affect uh, White Lake or Lake Grinnell? Yes. Thank you. Um, moving on into, um, again, Mr. Simmons report, section three, um, 3B, you indicated that WB50 truck will be the largest truck on site to circulate. Um, it's a one-way circulation around the entire site. Uh, according to the signage out there now, that's the way yes. it will be preserved. Um, just to, just to, to clarify, uh, um, emergency management vehicles visiting the site, WB50, uh, I mean, a fire truck would have a smaller permit radius. That's correct. You work around and articulate it. So any emergency management vehicle would be able to access around the site as well. Yes. Um, moving on to this section, our page five, our stormwater um, drainage review of the site, Mr. Chairman. Um, we did have some initial comments uh, on pages four and five uh, in regard to water quantity, water quality, groundwater recharge, and a couple other um, maintenance and uh, stormwater design uh, pipe sizes. What, what we found um, through clarification from Mr. Dykes' office, we did have a, a, a telephone meeting with Mr. Dykstra to go over these particular items. Um, and um, we've, I'll put it this way, we've worked out most of them. Um, a, a new report is going to be issued uh, that's going to address our comments as well. But we find that the design overall does meet the stormwater management design. It just needs to be sharpened a little bit. But we have no reason to believe that stormwater management would be an issue from this part of the development. What were the areas of concern, Tom? Um, the, the areas, areas of concern are discussing? in regard to um, the stormwater quantity control. Again, knowing that this site and uh, some of the idea of a variance being uh, leaving the site with stormwater, we wanted to make sure that the, the design of the stormwater quantity was in accordance with the, the current rules. Um, there were certain pipes uh, on the actual detail of the, of the stormwater structure. The um, the permeable blocks uh, that are placed on the site, there's gravel and underdrain piping underneath that particular uh, paver. Uh, what we wanted to make sure is that that wasn't arbitrarily taking stormwater flow uh, away from the site without mitigation. Um, Mr. Dykes' design shows stone underneath uh, those perforated pipe where the water is going to settle down into a large stone pocket. Um, before it even gets into that perforated pipe. So we wanted to make sure that that was all reflected in the stormwater design and that it wasn't going to intercept flow coming down through the permeable pavers and throw it right over to that basin in the back. Um, and and the, we, were, we were comfortable that that's taking place now. The permeable pavers that you're talking about are those through, when I drove the property today, obviously you've got pavers that are going up through the drive. They are not permeable. But the ones that are being added to the site will be in that permeable fashion with stone pockets underneath is basically the design. Yeah, it's basically a subsurface detention pond under the permeable pavements. 
and the um, also the, the that pond, that settling pond that was referred to in the northwest corner of the site, uh, the smaller of the two ponds, um, we actually um, had some questions about the size and how much volume. Um, Mr. Dykstra, in, in our discussions, has indicated that we'll have uh, some plans that will reflect the contour elevations of that area, just so we can just verify that the, the storage capacity is there. Um, it's from a site inspection, um, it looks like it's large enough, but we want to see that as part of the design. Um, the idea of recharge, um, uh, when it comes to uh, one of the parameters of stormwater management, make sure we have recharge, um, and that can be done in a, a, a number of ways. Um, recharge can uh, take the difference in the two-year design storm. That's what we engineers call uh, uh, the, the worst thunderstorm you can get during a year is the one-year storm. The two-year storm is elevated above that. We have to store the difference in flows, the existing two-year versus the proposed two-year. Um, Mr. Dykstra is storing that in the gravel area that I was just talking about. We want to make sure that that doesn't raise up into those perforated pipes and leaves too quickly. Um, so the volume, Mr. Dykstra is going to provide that revised report to show that, but it, that seems feasible as well. Um, if if um, if there's some expansion required, some, some larger area of stone, that'll be shown on that plan, but it, it's, um, it's feasible at this point. We just want to make sure of that. Um, and then uh, finally, in terms of uh, forest um, uh, permeable pavers and, and the, uh, the, the blocks that we're talking about, uh, there's a, um, a maintenance aspect to it that we want to see more solidified as part of um, uh, the Technically, it should be filed along with uh, the property so that any owner from this point on knows how to maintain their their uh, permeable paper blocks. So um, that was uh, on page five. That was item number F, um, where we're uh, although the tech spec 23 is what it's called. That that's the maintenance manual. Um, it does have information in it. We want to see it more geared to a maintenance professional um, and then filed as part of the site plan application uh, and become part of the chain the title so that it's part of the record <coughs> going forward. That's customarily what we look for. Um, so from a stormwater management standpoint, um, we believe that the design um, has merit. It will work. Mr. Dykstra will work it out with our office and we can, uh, um, put, uh, you know, if it's a condition of the uh, any approving resolution, we'd be amenable to that. Um, moving off of stormwater and moving into lighting, I just want to make sure in your response um, you're adding lights to the site in the parking areas. Um, the response letter uh, talked about the time. What, have, what is the what lights are going to be on? What's going to be off? Security lights on will be dust to dawn. Okay, and, but not every light is a security light. So sure. parking lot lights will be turned off uh, an hour after closing. What would be the time frame? Whatever is requested. Um, an hour after closing is a, usually a reputable way to, to handle that. So what are the hours of operation? Again? But, that, but that's seasonal. That's typically in season, winter months or not. So, so summertime, the lights won't even be on, but uh, in the winter could be. On until 7. Okay. Um, is there going to be testimony about um, anything with the building in terms of architectural? There's no one um, that I know we had questioned, uh, and I guess you responded to it in your letter, uh, that HVA equipment, uh, What's the status of the HVA equipment for the site? Okay, so for the proposed building, it's a 32,500 square foot building. Only approximately 400 square feet of it is HVAC. The rest of it's a, a cold shell, effectively. The equipment keeps it warm. So there'll be one um, air conditioning condensing unit outside the building on the ground at the northwesterly corner. And just for confirmation, so that's going to be the manufacturing this, right. There's building three is a manufacturing building, yeah. and that building eight will be the new manufacturing building. Building four will be taken offline, and that will be uh, storage. And what will be stored in that facility? They store the materials for packaging. No hazardous material, anything else like that. You yeah. guys are committed to make sure that that's conditional. Yes, yeah. I understood. Okay. Um, yes, in your uh, opinion, this uh, Permanent uh, pavers and the permanent pavers and this whole outline of the stormwater drain, is 
there's a storage array. Is there any, any chance this is going to work in the aquifer? If there's a spillage of, uh, of, gasoline, of or gasoline or diesel or um, I'm, I don't know what other equipment they have there. I mean, it was, uh, there were, it wasn't any testimony just yet. If, if, if I may, um, thank you for allowing me to, to speak. Um, we don't have any diesel fuel tanks. We don't receive diesel. All our all our um, trucks get off-site diesel. Uh, we have vehicles that feed our uh, forklifts and all that. Um, and the areas that we have any type of hazardous, which would be a diesel they refer to, is on solid concrete and asphalt. It's not on permeable pit type pavement. It'd be up on top where there's uh, the true pavement and would consolidate that. Because so that would be caught up in your stormwater. Yeah, but it would never drain that. We, we have, we've never had a spillage. I mean, these are forklifts. They take 10 gallons. They're not, we don't have bulk storage of fuel on site. Do you have a, a storage maintenance manual? I'm sure we do. I can provide one. Okay. So if you, I'll, I'll have that provided well, to you. I'm just curious about any, because we talk about toxic materials. Get the gasoline and the uh, well, we don't have gasoline. We don't have gasoline. We just have we have just and diesel. They could still. They call them accidents because nobody plans for them. We we have we have a spill prevention program that we can provide to you. Tom, is that going to be satisfied? Oh, we're a coverage for the aquifer. You know, from a hydrogeologist standpoint, um, I'm not a hydrogeologist. I do know that the soils underneath this site are permeable. Um, that's uh, shown in, in pets. So the, the stone pocket that's underneath uh, the, the, uh, the permeable pavers that we're talking about, um, there's nothing that would prevent any liquid coming through that from getting into the soil. Um, that's the best way that I can describe it. But we would, we, we, would not be, we would not be recharging or fueling any machinery on the permeable areas. It would be on non-pervious uh, non uh, pavement. So we're not there. So yeah, if, if I may, it really goes into your loading or offloading of your materials and or the material you're taking into the site and off to the site and where you're staging your your trucks while they're performing that act. You know, and having some type of loading and unloading area or some type of idling requirements and spill prevention at any event. We Third, one of the trucks rupture, a hydraulic line goes, I, I, that you I have really a spill prevention can, measure to go we, we can provide and mitigate the, it. We, we can provide the areas that unloading will happen and uh, ensure that there's uh, impervious type pavement there. All right, and then my, my question while we're on, back to the stormwater for a moment, any process discharge water taking place here with your? We're a, we're a zero slump type manufacturing, so we operate at a 6% moisture in our product. Uh, natural aggregates have about 5%, so we induce very little water. Our cleanup does not induce, we, we have no water cleanup. So you have no discharge we're not, of we're any not, spent? We're not, we're not a ready mix plant. Okay. Uh, the zero, zero moisture coming out of, zero, zero liquids coming out of our plant. Okay, great, thank you. And you're, you're moving what's already been going on there? There's an existing application or right. existing use. What we're doing is we're taking an existing building that's the lower factory, we're up, upgrading it to a more efficient, more uh, cost-effective type operation. So our operation is really not changing. We're right. just reusing it. It was cost-ineffective to retrofit the existing building. It was easier to build a newer building and less expensive. So we chose that route. Um, so the existing building where there's two, actually there's two uh, machines in there currently, uh, is just going to be used for storage, for packaging materials, and as the supply chain is getting harder and harder, we're inventorying more packaging material, so we're not going to take it down. We just feel that it's uh, best used as inventorying product. So that's what I, why I wanted to ask that question. So what you're doing is you're taking what you're already doing in one place on site, and you're moving it to a different building. Right, so at, at a more, more efficient, more carbon, even though the building's bigger, mm -hmm. it's less carbon footprint. We're uh, producing it more efficiently than prior. And this is not going to generate more of the equipment that you're using right now, right? No, it's, re it's actually what we're doing is replacing two um, non or obsolete pieces of equipment mm -hmm. that are called multi-layers. And we it manufactures it, and you have to do a lot of package, a lot of handling. And we're consolidating into a more modern type operation. We also operate eight of these operations throughout the U.S. 
and we're just updating that to make sure that it's more efficient. Okay. So um, it's less it's less time, but we're producing more. And with regard to the storage, I just have a question of where you, of the storage because in, in terms of inventory storage so or dry your, storage, your product. Okay. Right? So you're you're storing, you're making it. I understand the packaging stuff is going to to yes. three, but when you say you're going to store what you're making. Correct. Right. Where are you putting that? That's going in the back? Yes. There's an inventory area that's provided. Yeah, this is all. And that's outside. Area. That's not yes. in a building. That's outside. Yes. That's just basically Correct. manufactured concrete pavers. Okay. A non-leaching so when, we talk about, when we talk about what you manufacture, I just want to make sure that we're all understanding exactly what you manufacture. It, when you say pavers, are you talking about pavers that are this big? Or are you talking about those giant walls of pavers? No, we're talking about pavers that you typically find in your own backyard. Okay. Where so you're small. walking on your driveways. So okay. the product that you're comfortable being in your backyard and your driveway okay. is the type of product we're storing. Okay. Great. And you have no drains in the building too? No, we, we, we have no liquids. Perfect. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm sorry, I want to contact. A small building going to be storage for your packing material. Correct. The material that you're now you're working for is the one where you're going to put the addition on. What's going to be that? What are you going to use that building for? I, I lost that. The, yeah, the that. That's manufacturing. That's a, currently what we're doing is we're duplicating what is in there right now. Into the building. That's yes. So what, what, is what is in the building that you just right? Building three is going there. Yeah. And what's the little going, building which has. The building that you're just, what are you going to use that building for? Now? Which one? Building three is walls, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wall. It, it manufactures retaining walls. Retaining wall blocks. And also some pavers. It has the ability to do both. Okay. So you're not replacing that. It's just no, no, no. This is, what we're replacing is the lower, the, the lower obsolete yeah. factory, which really does it. The equipment's old, so yeah. it, it was more cost effective oh, just to build it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, in further, uh, just furtherance with Dr. Parker's uh, comment about um, uh, the aquifer and the uh, infiltration, what I would suggest, and based on the applicant's uh, comment, um, that uh, there's a spill prevention plan that's part of this application to be made part of, um, of the site documents as well as the um, stormwater uh, management plan, um, and, made, and that spill uh, uh, prevention uh, plan include immediate contact to the township offices so that they are aware, uh, specifically the uh, w whatever township offices we need to govern and and, uh, and the water department. So if there is any spill or any leaking or any broken hoses, we know about it immediately. Um, there's not an immediate danger of, of that getting into the aquifer, Dr. Parker. But if uh, we have the advance notice, then it should be. Uh, so I think that's something that would be part of this application. All, all our facilities have spill prevention plans. We have a full safety department. So we'll just share that. Uh, that document already exists. It's not something that we need to create. It would have it, to be modified to include the new. Yes, we'll, we'll, share, we'll share it we'll share with uh, Ken and uh, he'll make sure it's uh, adaptable to the, prop, to the site. Right. Okay. Perfect. And specifically in the stormwater management uh, uh, for, uh, maintenance uh, management. DEP permit requirement would fall this under a general permit or an individual? The general permit. <coughs> general? This is six to six. Right? six, to six yeah. Are your current hours of operation six, six to six? six? Yes. Think that's what you currently do now? Correct. Okay. Have there been any instances, discharge, anything else like that in larger ponds that are near? We never, and I'm going to knock on wood. We've been operating paving stones for 50 years. We've never had a spill issue. Uh, our products are all dry. Yeah. Um, and the most fuel we have is to fill a forklift, and it's typically done in fill zones. And it's no different than filling your car with gas. It's, you know, yeah. get a splash or two, that's about it. Okay. Sorry, John. A couple more items, Mr. Chairman. Um, on, still on page six, um, item nine for utilities. Uh, specifically the water, I know that um, uh, there was a discussion that uh, this application will be worked out with the Sparta Water Department. Um, in the comment letter, uh, uh, Mr. 
should like to agree to all our items. I just want to, on the record, that um, uh, that the property owner will be responsible for restoration of their surface treatment uh, should any uh, work be needed on the water line to the site. That's correct. Yes. Um, moving on to page seven, um, in regard to item 10, uh, there was no discussion about signs or signage for the site. Is there anything that's added or going to be proposed there's building no, or ground? There's no changes to the signage. So, so no glimpse? <laughs> and there was something in there also about the power lines, right, that need to be rerouted around the building? Yeah. So obviously we've, we've had conversation with the power authority. Uh, they were there uh, about a month ago. They're going to reroute all the power to the adjacent property line and go around and refeed everything. So that's all going to be cleaned up. They should have their design completed in the next two weeks. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, in following Mr. Simmons' report, that's basically uh, what I had in terms of comments. Was there a particular reason, I guess, an EIS was not submitted? The reason we did not submit an EIS is it, it's a fully disturbed site for the free building over existing impervious areas. It didn't make a lot of we're building what's basically there when it's moving. It's not. What's there right now where you're putting building A? Did you see the um, environmental report that the commission put? Yeah, I read that, and I responded to it in my Okay. And you're okay with that as well, correct? Those yes, I, in visiting the site, um, uh, some of the areas of the, uh, potential wetlands that we might find from a GIS mapping, um, that they don't physically exist on the site. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm comfortable uh, with that. Uh, if the board, if the board would feel more compelled, they can always get a, uh, a letter from an environmental uh, scientist to state that fact. But the, there's a big sea of gravel everywhere around the site, more than 150 feet away uh, from any wetlands that might be off-site as well. So, and this <coughs> simply is an area of development. That's what we'd be looking for. Uh, so, I, in visiting the site today, there was. General question since we're on this subject. I guess this site was one time uh, a mine. Was it a gravel mine? Or? It was originally a gravel mine. Yeah, that's why point. we have two depressions, two ponds that are, don't flow anywhere. I guess it was mined to a point that. Correct. They they mine, and then groundwater, then groundwater took over. <coughs> you call that a settling pond to the north corner. Why, why is it called a settling pond? It was part of the sand plant. So, okay, we should, and it, it doesn't have a discharge location. Correct. So it totally seeps into the groundwater. Correct. Uh, I asked the owner, do you see a lot of fluctuation in that work in the, the pond elevation? That pond's been fairly stable because we have inventory around it currently. Uh, we've seen no real issues, and we've watched it uh, just to monitor how the flooding is and if the elevations are proper for the property, especially for the, the new building that we're putting on. It seems to be pretty consistent. Okay. Uh, of course, lower in the summer months as, you know, the heat is higher, but the winter months, there's no flooding. And it's, it's discharging somewhere. We, we just, we just I, I, th I think it's naturally draining. Yeah, into the aquifer, to a yeah. shallow aquifer. Yeah, it's going through a sand filter and naturally cleaning yeah, itself. A shallow aquifer, probably. True. But the upper pond is the, the larger one. I guess, that's in, is that in a 100-year floodplain? I'm just curious. It would be a 100-year floodplain. Did you delineate it on the plan with the uh, limits of the stir uh, along that stream, the incoming stream? Is that on the plan? It's hard to read the plan. I no, we did not delineate that. Okay. Do you know how far it goes over? I'm just curious. The 100-year the, the flood. How far it goes over? Yeah, the, uh, the, the existing uh, stream that discharges into the pond. The stream discharges into the pond. The pond overflowed a couple inches in a 100-year storm. Yeah. What I did, you, did you route that? I'm just curious. I routed the pond, yes. The, the big pond. Yes. Okay. And it, it self-contains a hundred euros. It does not. It oh, just, just it just overflows to the north. Have you ever thought of eventually maybe piping the two? But then you'd have to get a deep. 
be Burlington to put the two together. I mean, we've never seen it. I mean, the routing says it overflows. We've never seen the pond anywhere near the level of, so what actually happened is it's going in the ground. Yeah, so this is definitely a fully disturbed former mine pit. You know. right. um, the paving stones, are they your product? Yes. Is, it permeable? is that a yes. new product of yours? No, it, it's not. It's not a new product. It's been um, it's been out probably about 10, 15 years, industry wide. Um, it's been accepted by the um, U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, there's legislation on that to enact that as part of uh, stormwater management. No, I've used, I've used your products. They're pretty good products. Before I'm so sorry. sorry. I've spec your products, and they're good products. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the product that works. The design. The design is basically. What, you, what permeable is doing is you're creating the recharge basin below it. Yeah, I know that, but you, you're creating gaps. So, yes, so we have, but we you, have you, like the normal paving stones on your website are just. Tip, tip, typically, you have maybe a two or three millimeter gap between right. paving stones. When you get into permeable, it's like almost 15 millimeters apart. So you're absorbing a lot more water than the surface area of the paver itself. Oh, so you can save additional dust? waters. Are you using stone dust in between the gaps? No, no, no. Using probably a number. Use a number eight. A number eight jar apple. Yeah, you use a number eight between the joints, so that way you want the water to kind of okay. get through it. Then you get progressively larger as you go down. You go to eights. To, you know, just progressively get larger. Depending on your retention, you could go up to an inch stone, right. depending on how much you want to retain. So the entire orange area will be permeable pavers. Correct. So, so, so you're going to most likely do storage of inventory on, on that. Because it's a large area. I mean, and, and permeable pavers aren't, even though you make them, they're yours. They're not inexpensive. They, 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 the, the pavers are the cheapest part. The installation is what costs the money. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Putting yeah. in the stone and the underground drainage Correct. and everything else. <coughs> so the entire orange area will be utilized for what? Correct. But 80, no, no, I think it's about 80,000 feet of permeable pavers. Yeah, it's a lot of permeable. Yeah. But uh, could you go into where the employees will park? Are they parking on a section of that? Um, they're parking more towards the okay. office building that's already existently paved. Okay. So over the, over the, or over the pavers? Yeah, that, 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 that's normal paving design where it's uh, basically focusing towards drainage. There is active drainage there that's taking the upper water to the lower settlement pond. So the site the, has drainage already. Has the, because the plans really don't show a demarcated employee parking area. The employees all park up here. Okay, but the plan, the plan, I, the plan said, I, I'm from a fill-in. <coughs> the plan I had, eight and a half by 11s didn't really go into. I couldn't see the, the parking in there. So are they demarcated or, or are they? The they, handicaps are demarcated. It's a paver um, mm -hmm. area, so the stripes have disappeared. Yeah, so maybe you want to clean that up a little bit. We will. If you've noticed, we've uh, we acquired the property a few years back. Actually, we closed on it about uh, about a year ago. So um, oh, good. we've yes. been upgrading everything as. Uh, so would you be you would be an objection to demarcate only because you're. We, we 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 would do it on our own. So it's, we have no problem by you stipulating that because uh, clear parking and uh, it, it, it it presents it presents the product better. That everything's clean. And well, let me tell you why I'm saying that. So this is probably one of the largest areas I've seen of permeable parking. I mean, permeable paper being used right now. And this is the way with the new state requirements going towards water quality. This is the new system. So I would suspect you may have people coming, engineers, civil engineers, planners going there to look. Let me see how this operates and what's the price per square foot. You know, so. You're kind of doing like a, a litmus we've, we've test. Done, we've done some sample projects for the, I live on Long Island, for the town of um, Babylon. They had some uh, major product, major, because we're in a low-lying area, and they had issues with their library, so we did a sample, and uh, we showed how they, we redid their whole parking lot, and we eliminated the whole drainage issue that they had, because drainage is not just drainage, it's about the impact of heavy water at, a, at any given time. The intensity of the yeah, storm. Yeah, the intensity the of the storms and how you can recapture that. And when you have these little storm drains and these loop to dos just trying to collect water, so what we did is we completely removed the parking lot, redid the whole pavement on it with permeable paving, and that flooding issue went away. And we, we have about a six foot water table there, so there wasn't much area to work with because the challenge they had was putting the drywalls in on such a shallow base. So we removed it, we, we did it the whole thing, and we proved to them that the actual system works. We actually donated the project, and they're very happy with it. I mean, 
mean, they, they have not flooded since it was done. Okay. So the system works. Well, hope so. No, it works. <laughs> it works. We, we, to, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be throwing money away if it wasn't working. So really, so this, so the area in gold is really going to be storage for your material. Correct. So pr produced material will be moved, you know. A, con a constant flow of material. Oh, yeah. It, it, manufacturing material comes, comes out, off. a couple days later it goes out. So it's, it's kind of a, yeah. an inventory storage area. Oh, yeah. pallet, it's, ten pallets from like, ten yeah, pallets from Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not, it's not if like... you make it a custom color, yeah. it make 20 pallets, yeah. so and they're shipped out. material coming out of the plant, it gets stored, shipped out, more, more products coming out. And you have, you have internal hoppers, you do all yes. your own... Yes, everything done, outside, everything is done inside. Inside. inside the building. Correct. So that's why the building's not going to be heated or because it's, gonna, it's a hopper building, so... Okay, so just so... Um, how high do you stack the material wall, with the retaining walls? Typically we go about four to five high because the pallets collapse after that. Yeah, so the pallets are approximately two feet, so I would say five, maybe 12 feet. And all, all your, you, have the, you have the bigger forklifts and they are all diesel. We run, uh, yes, we run yeah. diesel. The product weighs about 3,000 pounds. We run 8,000 pound forklifts just for safety that the forklift drivers cannot actually operate. Even if they pick up the product incorrectly, the machine itself can support the weight. Okay, and you don't have any problem with loading and unloading areas because there are there are concrete blocks. What's the PSI of the block? I'm just curious. PSI is minimum is eight thousand PSI. We shoot for ten thousand PSI. So they can handle linear loads. From the oh yeah, truck, yeah, so. definitely. Okay, my, my simple questions were, okay, that's why I wanted to know, when I heard the word settling pond, that's what I thought, I thought it was an old... I, I don't believe there's going to be anything coming from the new addition going to that settling pond. If, well, if the permanent paving is working as per design, design, there'll be no overflow whatsoever. No, you get a hundred year storm, you guys are Well, if we get a hundred year storm, we're all out again. It's a hundred years. <laughs> But, but like, it seems like 100-year storms come every year. You've had a few of those 100-year yeah. storms. <laughs> every year there's 100-year storms. What about the past 15 years? So what's so? a 100-year storm? It's last year. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> we got to change that terminology. And so, what's the impact? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Okay. When you're talking about the 100-year storm, the impact, and again, um, up over in that area and over by Lake Grinnell, I know you said there would be no effect on it, but anyone that's been over to Lake Grinnell knows that 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 lake tends to go over anyway. So you're saying this will be totally self-sufficient when it comes to that and nothing is going to affect it? Typically when we design these systems, they can accommodate anywhere from 20 to 30 inches per hour. The most storms we get here are three to six. So this system's designed for 20 to 30 inches per hour. Okay. Yeah, granted, it's gonna reach capacity after a certain while, but you're not getting 30 inches for two hours. Well, if we all were flooding. What did we get? <laughs> no, 30, no, 30 inches is like crazy. What did we get? I think it was 14 to 12 hours. Yeah, 12. 12 hours, 30 But this, this system designed for 30 inches. Okay. And that's... going to make sure because... And we, t and we actually test it. There's testing methods that we have. What we do is we put a, like a drum around it. And what we do is seal the drum. We pour the water on top. And we do the oil that we welcome to visit. And it just... We measure and we, and we actually monitor how fast it absorbs that water. So we actually fill it, and we monitor exactly, we know the exact gallonage that's going down there. And this application does not increase the impervious coverage at all. You're underneath the impervious coverage. We're right. That's your question. We're at 30%, the allowed is 40%. Yeah, so you're under. Yes. I just want it on the record again that you're under the impervious coverage. Yes. What ratio did you use for the imper for permeable pavers? Did 100%. Okay. It they could have they could have went to a little bit smaller number, so but we used 100%. Yeah, we just assumed it's impervious for for, 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 that for planning purposes, yeah. not for not engineering purposes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I know we had to cover. There was a couple of items for the planner. Jason uh, should hit on. I have a yeah. I'll just then we we'll go to the letter. So. Yeah, the, the thing I had was interesting why there wasn't some pond to pond system, but it appears that we have a shallow aquifer that's absorbing all the water out there under your storm. Um, the building itself, you said a prefabricated metal building. You didn't, did you submit uh, any kind of rendering of it? I we guess did. no. Yeah, okay. So um, the one thing with the prefabricated metal, I just looked at a building the other day, is two year wait time. So yeah. So, yeah actually on site. 
Oh, do you have the building ready? It's already delivered. What are you, a used one? Or? No, it's, <laughs> believe, believe, believe it or not, and I, I don't want to say I jumped the gun here. I, I ordered the building, and the I ordered from Nucor, which is a popular yes, one, Nucor, the top yes. one. So they said that the building would be delivered in December. I mean, actually, in September, because I ordered it in uh, January. So I said 10-month wait, because the equipment's not being delivered till actually July. So I said, all right, timing's a little off, but you know, everybody's behind, so it'll probably work. So come February, he said, there was a big cancellation. They can get you in next month. Will you take the building? I said, with the supply shortage, I said, I'll take the building. So I paid for the building. It's delivered already. So I end up, it's on site already. So if I wanted yes, a, I took a big gamble. Yes, I did. So if I wanted a brick building, it, uh, <laughs> I'm good luck with a brick building right now. I'm building one in uh, Smithtown right now, and it's just uh, getting product to yeah, like break. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, rebar, reinforced. Yeah, it's just everything's uh, crazy. But actually, metal, the, build, the building is on site, and it was just because somebody had a cancellation, and we were able to take advantage of uh, putting our spot in first. You have a lot of faith in your attorney. <laughs> the engineer. I have a lot of faith in whatever. If it's not here, it'll be somewhere else. <laughs> okay. So, and again, you you said it was only 400 square feet of of heated space. Heated yeah, space. that that's just going to be for the employees when they come in if they need to shower, clean, eat lunch. That way they because you know it gets stuffed in the summertime as we all know. So if they need to cool but off. But you're going to pump. You're going to heat it though. No, heat, heating the equipment generates enough heat because oh, yeah, basically on hydraulics yeah. that it actually generates heat. So well, yeah, heat, 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 heat. Our, heat's our enemy. So we, we have plenty of heat in the winter time. It's the summertime that uh, becomes problem. So we just work, run with the doors open. We run circulated fans, just keeping the air flowing throughout the building. But the, 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 the guys need a little, they need to cool off. So we're building a 400 square foot area for them just to have lunch, cool off a little bit, take a break. But you don't have a problem in the winter with oh, too quick of cooling on your product? No, we're not worried about that. Okay, you would know your product. Better. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it generates heat. Concrete itself, the chambers itself are totally insulated. So what happens is when you put the concrete product in there, as long as it's insulated, it's coming out of the we're manufacturing probably at 60, about 60 degrees, and it starts generating its own heat. So the chambers actually heat themselves, and it's kind of it's like giant thermos. We don't put heat into that. Yeah, the reason I brought these questions up is. Uh, like to use those wall-mounted, roof-mounted blow hot heaters for propane. They're so inefficient; they just blow air right out the door. So, but he doesn't. He's going to be making one one hundred percent. If we have certain workstations that seem to be cold, what we do is we put that forced hot air, like almost like those unit heaters when you go to a restaurant, they put it on top. Of so you kind of buy them and just hang them from the ceiling. Infra infrared, hey, right? The infrared. 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 You, you kind of heat that workstation. Because you, you can't heat a 32,000 no. square foot building at uh, 40 feet high. It's just, uh, it's impractical, it's not going to work. Because heat rises, the guys will always be cold. So we'll put uh, spot heaters where the work uh, where the workstations are. So, so you really don't have, it, you're really not storage, storing any uh, hazardous materials. So you're not, you don't need a manifest for the fire department. Yeah. Okay, so you're not required Sand, to Sand, water, them. gravel, that's it. So sometimes if they do, they have to have a manifest so the fire department knows when this they is, come on site. This is, yes, this is just concrete product. There's nothing special to it. It's been manufactured for 2,000 years now. Yeah, you know, even though I think we can make a condition that you produce a manifest for the fire department of what you have. That's fine. This way they have it on file. They know when they show up, they don't have to worry about anything. They're that's, not storing that, anything, that, so that, we'll do fine. a manifest for the fire department. Okay, the one question, uh, we have to go back to uh, the review letter, Catherine's review letter. Um, I'm going to jump. She goes into some of the questions I asked with general. Uh, the first few pages showed the site, addressed the site. Uh, again, I think your engineer testified to that these are all single story buildings on site because the plans really don't show if they were one story, two story. But one's a Quonset hut, one's a manufacturing building. So they're all single story buildings on site. It's just that the plan didn't depict what's on the other building. Okay, so maybe you can just upgrade the plans when you make the revisions. Yeah. What's one story, what is two story? Because this does come into uh, calculations for square feet. Obviously, this the use is a permitted use of the zone. Um, obviously, you've been here before. Um, we went into the impervious. So those are the first few pages of Catherine's report. Um, I'm already to page six. Uh, you already, uh, well, we go to off street parking and site circulation. Uh, they did testify that they're going to demarcate and make provisions to the plans. 
show where everybody parks, maybe put a little bumper stock, you know, just something to demarcate the space. So, you know, so hopefully maybe I'll come and visit the site, look at the paving, you know, take a look at it, look at this because this is now, again, this is a large area uh, of pavers. Uh, so I'd like to see how it functions once you, once you get done. Um, signage, and I guess signage, we testified that you're making no changes on Right. No new signs. So um, I'm all the way to cap to uh, all the way to page seven summary of uh, and it's, it's item E summary of product project review comments and recommendations. Um, you testified to a lot of this already. Surface parking where they're going to be. I'd like to see that demarcated. We've already stated that and they agreed to that. Um, that number of stories and impervious coverage. Uh, I like that they went conservative. So yeah. even though some engineers can use and not say the product's 100% impervious, you can say it's 80 or 75. They went 100, which, which is conservative, which, which is, uh, which I think is better than a fact. Uh, okay, go, going all the way to page nine, Landscaping by ordinance, you're supposed to screen, but in the residential, but your only residential is across the street. And you really, it's hard to see except for the front building, you really don't see the buildings from the road. Correct. There's, there's a natural screen there. The uh, existing uh, trees are all uh, adults. So the sure. only comment I would make to that, I want to be just driving through tonight. I think you're right, there is a lot of natural barrier that's already built up around the property with the exception of once you went well, in two different directions. But uh, if you're coming up towards the property and making a left into the facility, you just look at it's where the, the antique uh, excavators and stuff like that are. You, you can see far back and you can actually see the, uh, you know, some of the equipment and things like that back there. So I think that was the only portion of the property. I think the rest of it was pretty well buffered with regards to the landscape component. Uh, but you want to look at that. Again, I don't know what your intention is with the uh, excavators that are, are sitting out front or if that's something you guys are looking to keep for nostalgia or, or whatnot but that was the only area I saw that was uh, that really you could see back into some of the some of the pits and some of the facility would would you uh, not be an objection to do some infill planning um I, th I think we could put some pines up there if you want us to block the building I'm fine yeah, with that they're, walk, they're yeah. inexpensive they grow very quickly I think the equipment, I think that's kind of nostalgic. I think seeing some old equipment, it's the history of what Sparta is, what the whole area has been. I'd like to keep those and I'll put uh, a the plant. Yeah. I'll put some pines back there, like, uh, and they'll grow, they'll grow tall. They'll have your, have your engineers spot on the plan a few locations that we can do some infill planting. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Some native, right. I'm fine, I'm fine with that. That's, it. that's, all, in, that's all inexpensive stuff and it grows fast. No, 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 no. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a letter from the town saying to remove them. No, you're, you're, buy, you're buying the land, correct? We own the land, own yes. The land. And there was an existing lease with JCP and L. No, Who no. The there's a third. There's a third party, and I'm still trying to find out. And I think I had uh, uh, Mike look into it. Um, I don't know what the deal is. They're Normally not. They're, they're, they're not. They're not paying rent. There's no benefit to the owner. So I really don't know what they're there for. So I, I would I would love to find a way to get them out because I don't know what deal was made prior. Um, there's really no paperwork available to me. So um, we're contemplating sending them a letter to either pay rent or get the hell out. What kind of deed restriction was placed on your property? That I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You'd find out when you did the title search. I'm sure. Um, I don't think you handled the title yeah, search. No, no, There's no. no deed restriction on that. I don't think they filed anything. I think I'm, we're little. looking into that. I'm Could trying to get them out of there just as much as you are. Mm -hmm. So if you would send me a letter as, an, as a part of the thing that any unused area, I'm going to forward it to them and say they have X amount of days to remove it, or I will, and then I'll address the actual functional. How old is that solar field? Do you think that was installed in 2012, and they have a 25-year lease. I think we talked about earlier, and we accept that as a condition that the panels not being needed to be removed or the racks that aren't. 
A letter, a letter from the town, I would accept that, forward it to them, and give them X amount of days to remove it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not mine, so it's not like it's my stuff. I want them yeah. out of there just I mean, as much as you do. I mean, he put in the commission, he has to, right? But the problem, but it's not his property. Yeah, problem. but the problem, it is his property, but there's a restriction on him touching. It's is not there an environmental property. deed restriction on it? Did he have to cap it? I, again, I, I wouldn't know. No, it's not a land. No. no. So, but normally they do, these solar companies. Really, it's really a, uh, a tax write off. It, it depreciates the equipment right away. So it's really a third party. So if it was the JCPNL or public service. No, it, it's a third party. A third been party sold four it's been sold four times already. Yeah, so mm -hmm. what happens is there's a lot of Wall Street. Yeah, exactly right. They're investors. It's a big tax write off. Yeah. Because they can depreciate a solar field in one year. So if you put a million dollars in, you can depreciate that million dollars in one year. D different than time. what you're saying on depreciation, it's cash on cash. Yeah. So That's typically true. where you get a million dollar depreciation, you take your aggregate sum and reduce it. This is a no, million no. dollars that would be owed to the government you get a credit for. Yeah. So it's cash on cash right now. It's not a depreciation cash. They sell the tax credit. Yeah. It's like... So that was back in the day when the escrow was could have been four. When they put that in, they flipped it three or four times to other third party service providers. If it's multiple, we that's a town issue. You tell them. No, it's act. It is active. It's active. It was just sold. It was just sold again. It was just sold again about two months ago. Two months ago, it was sold again to another party. And they don't even tell me. I'm supposed to approve this. Yeah. We agree we're going to remove those that are not in use. I'm, yes. I'm agreeing that you send me a letter and I'll send it to them and I'll have sir, them remove it. Sir, we, we've already sent a, a report that says they shall be removed. It's right in the review report. We're saying it tonight. You know, frankly, this is your responsibility. They, they shouldn't be there. They, they are on your property. They're unused. Uh, they should, you should take them out. So I, agree. I don't want to hear about, like, you have to hear from no. us. We've told you three times. So the resolution is going to say you have to, uh, there's no need to send another letter, you shall remove them, and you're promising to remove them. You know, if you run into trouble with your tenant, that's your problem. You may have to sue them, but they shall be removed. You understand I agree. that? Okay. I agree. Good. Look, that's solar, I don't know what the duration of, how many years, whether that was a 10 or 30 year system they installed, but that's going to go, that leasehold's going to go with that system. So if you if you know that just changed ownership right in that agreement, you should see how many years are left in that flip. I'm, I'm choosing my battles. I'm on your side. I'm trying to have them all removed, not just the empty ones. But I'm choosing my battle right now. They made their money. They're gone. Yeah. So and it was just sold again. So it's um, my my objective is to get them off the front because I just don't want them there. Understood. There's no there's no financial benefit for me to have them there. Are you an off-taker of that energy? Nothing. Yeah, I get, I get nothing from, from it. Z from Zero. It. Okay. So we'll remove the empty racks. Thank you. Victor, any other comments or thoughts with regards to Kristen or Kristen? Catherine. Catherine. Catherine is, uh, yeah. Um, no, the, the buffers were the concern, but uh, the engineer will work with our office to spot on some location of indigenous new trees we're going to plant to help buffer that do not block the solar arrays, um, but I can work with the developer. I do have some experience in this, this field uh, to maybe try to help them get the, whoever has the lease on that property to be removed. The non-functioning, not just the racks, there's probably non-functioning solar arrays out there that aren't working. You just got to put a bolt meter on and this one goes, this one goes. I mean, Ten years, you get you get you get attrition, you get burnout. Sometimes five percent the first you know, certain amount of time. So, you know, I'd like to work with the developer to clean that up a little bit. So, if he agrees to that, like he did the condition, I'm okay with that too. So, that's about to just for this letter. All right. So, I will open it up to the board members. Uh, I think you, Mr. Dunn still wants to. Yeah, just want to have oh, we've covered most of it, but yeah, we'd like to just hit a couple points on the planning. So I've just been waiting Jesus. to sing. Actually. Sing. Thank you. Oh, no, sing, Jason. Okay, it's off. Um, it's karaoke planning. A couple things I just wanted to get on, on record uh, from the, uh, the zoning, the planned economic development zone. There's, there's five points in the land use law that I need to address um, as listed in uh, the planner's report. 
page five. Um, a is that the departures by the proposed development from zoning regulations otherwise applicable to the subject property conform to the zoning ordinance standards pursuant to subsection 52C of this act. Um, again, this ties back to the miscellaneous law since this is, this is a planned economic development that have to address these. In this case, there is no department departure in the zoning re regulations. Um, that contemplates like a, a bigger 20 year long general development plan. So that's not applicable here. Um, B is that the proposals for maintenance and conservation of the common open space are reliable and the amount, location, and purpose of the common space are adequate. Um, we went over this in a, uh, a pre-application meeting with the town and uh, Kathleen was there as well. Uh, we agreed that uh, there's really no need for common space here. It's not a practical place in the middle of an industrial site. Uh, so this one is also not applicable. Um, C, that the provision through the physical design of the proposed development for public services control, control over vehicle, vehicular and pedestrian traffic and the amenities of light, air, and recreation and visual enjoyment are adequate. Um, my opinion, and based on reviewing the application and being involved in the whole thing, is that the physical design um, of the development is adequate to accommodate these, uh, these items. Um, the plan has been engineered to uh, accommodate vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Um, the public use service utilities are being rerouted under under the uh, guise of uh, JCPNL and the Water Department, and light, air, and visual enjoyment um, are sufficient because of the existing buffer and the distance uh, between the road and the uh, proposed plan. D is that the proposed planned development will not have an unreasonably adverse impact upon the area that it, that is proposed to be established. Uh, the planned development will not have an unreasonable adverse impact to this area. Uh, this property has been established here in this location as a concrete paper plant since the 1980s. Um, it's a permitted use and it's been in the neighborhood uh, for many years. No, no significant amount of uh, new employees would be added or significant increase in traffic. Uh, we're simply just upgrading the, uh, uh, the equipment and the process as we heard in the testimony. And lastly, in the case of the proposed development that contemplates construction over a period of years, that the terms and conditions intend to protect the interests of the public and the residents, occupants, and owners of the proposed development, and the total completion of development are adequate. Again, this one's not really applicable because the, uh, the applicant intends to build this uh, as soon as he can and not extend many years of, uh, of development. Um, I just wanted to hit on those five points to get on record that we do apply. Uh, I also wanted to point out in the planner's report on page eight of 10, there's item number three um, that appears to be from a different application. I just want to note on the record that we we are not um, a railroad spur adjacent to building B and so on. It doesn't apply to us. So there's no use of rail on this property or no, that, that must have been of something from a previous report that the got into this one. It's been a hot topic lately. So. Right, that's why I want to make sure that that's not us. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Negro, would you, would you agree with that? It, what's along the, is that a spur along the rear? Yeah, I mean, you do have, yeah, the, I, a I saw spur. the railroad behind it. There's a railroad. So there's no use of that rail? Well, she's saying railroad that spur. there's improvements within the railroad right away. There's not. No? No. 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 That's a spillover from that from. It's along the edge? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's no spur there either, right? No, there's not a spur. So it's just a rail line, right? Oh, it's a rail rail sorry. Yes. She may be thinking. She may be thinking that the JCP and L could have been a spur, but but just no spur. So, okay. Thank you. And you're going to need permission from JCP and L. Obviously, you yes. have to. So. And that's what we have, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you. So, Catherine, I'd like to open it up to the board members for any additional questions uh, that they would have as it relates to the application. Just a question on the uh, prefab building, just because it's hard. It, so I was having trouble reading the application. How many entrances, doors will there be on, in the structure? Uh, my understanding is that hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, the surrounding area, or the majority of the building, is, is level to the edge of the exterior walls, so that really the doors can be placed anywhere. Uh, 
uh, accepting the end, the, the short end, so the silos and the uh, hoppers. Okay, so the one um, is to just make sure there's adequate exits and turn in case of a fire and uh, stuff like that. So just yeah, yes, there's right, right now there's eight garage doors going in mm -hmm. and they plan on putting uh, man doors every, whatever the fire code is, if it's 75 feet, there'll be man door, whatever. So right now we ordered the structure, we ordered cutouts, they're gonna be located and they're gonna check with the fire department and see what requirement is needed for how many feet per door and that'll be accommodated. Okay. Um, other than that, that's, my, that's um, really my only question, thank you. Thank you. Shocking, but no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know, everybody does. Just write it down. Sit down. There's not even the slow road to be. 100-year storm is coming. Don't say anything. No, I'm good. Okay, does that look like it? No questions at this time. Thank you. Mr. Cole? The only question I had was on the storm drainage, but it appears you met with Mr. Simmons and he answered your questions. So, I have no other questions. Okay. Councilor Lorena? Um, the only question I have, so you're substantially increasing the manufacturing capacity of this, right? Which not, not, not necessarily. What we're doing is we're taking two plants, consolidating them to one, and increasing efficiency. Okay. So, with that, I guess, just from a, a traffic perspective, again, this is a hot topic lately. Uh, with regards to the truck volumes, things like that that are coming out, any incre foreseeable increase based on what your we, existing we, operations are today? We don't foresee any increase in traffic because we're currently manufacturing that, just we can do it more efficiently. Okay. No, I think, you know, subject to the conditions that we had talked about, uh, and we talked about no hazardous material, we talked about conditions of stormwater conformity, uh, Lighting plan to be submitted, I guess, once you guys finalize. Okay. Uh, removal of solar. Very good stuff there. Uh, no other questions on, on my side. And so, a possible addition of some plants. Yeah, the yeah. Lands, landscape. Besides the plants, could we just, uh, I'm going through some photographs and some of the split rail fence in the front has some missing sections. Yeah, that was addressed. I have, if you notice, uh, we've had a landscaper out there cleaning everything up more. We just had a new landscaper. Um, we're going to replace some of those panels. Good, okay. Yeah, so that, that's that's all on the list of all repairs that are being done. And there's many more behind besides okay. that. This, we're going to fix up the front. Yes, the front will be fixed up. We're going to clean up the trees, trim them down a little bit, and we're going to start uh, making the place look like a real place. condition of cleaning up the front, repair the fence. Yeah, it already, it already started. It's past there today. Okay. A lot of the weeds have been cleaned. Everything's being cleaned up. We changed landscapers. Remember, I only bought it a year ago, so okay. now this is the first summer that we're having. So we're like to make that You don't mind if it's a condition on a resolution? Not at all, because I, I would do it before you would even ask. So at this point, uh, we'll open it up to the public to see if there are any questions uh, that they would like to ask or, or, or comments. Comment. Sorry, what was that? I didn't hear anything. Yes, it's comments or testimony yes. at this stage. Anybody from the public? Uh, nobody from the public. Uh, so I guess we'll bring it back for a vote for the board. Dana, you take roll call. So if the board would entertain it, it would be a motion to approve the preliminary and final site plan and planned uh, development as described this evening with the conditions, uh, the standard conditions, with the conditions uh, discussed throughout the evening, uh, and they will be put into the resolution. They'll comply with Dave Simmons' review report and uh, the testimony of the applicant and the applicant's professionals regarding the same and the comments of Mr. Natelsky. They'll also comply with the review report of Catherine Sermad and the comments of Victor Venegra and the uh, they're hearing tonight. Uh, next condition is there'll be no hazardous materials uh, uh, used in the production or disposed of on the site or in the septic system or stormwater system. Uh, next numbered condition, they'll do a spill prevention control plan and, and provide it to the planning department and board engineer. 
and provide notice to the township and the fire department of any spills. They will uh, provide uh, the final stormwater design and revisions in accordance with the requirements of fellow associates and shall comply with the ordinances and stormwater management regulations except that the overflow of the existing pond nearest to Texas <coughs> Corner Road may uh, overflow in 100 year storm conditions as described by Mr. Dykstra this evening. The maintenance manu manual shall be prepared to the, and recorded to the satisfaction of fellow associates. The, uh, there will be no disturbance within 150 feet of wetlands areas. Uh, they will, the lights will, uh, except security lights will be off one hour after 6 p.m. closing time. Uh, they will provide an easement to the township for the water lines and uh, restore any surface uh, of any disturbance of, of the water line areas. They will, uh, uh, the applicant shall remove the unused uh, solar racks uh, <coughs> immediately. The uh, Applicant shall designate or demarcate the uh, parking spaces on the parking lot, including the uh, pav paver parking areas. Uh, the applicant uh, shall uh, shall not store uh, any outdoor storage of uh, materials product higher than 12 feet, and shall screen it from view from adjoining properties if there is anything viewable from adjoining properties. The applicant will um, provide the planning board and the fire department uh, with manifests uh, for the materials, but there shall be no hazardous materials as explained by the applicant and the applicant's witnesses. The applicant shall update the plans for the uh, uh, to show the uh, areas of the buildings that are two stories and the areas that are one story and the uh, HVAC <coughs> locations. Uh, the applicant will not install any new signs and the applicant shall install landscaping to the satisfaction of the township planner uh, and some evergreen materials in the infill areas. Uh, you're resistant evergreen materials in the, in the uh, uh, infill areas as described this evening and repair the existing fencing and then the standard conditions and that's what I have Mr. Chairman. Uh, Tom, was, it, was there also still a maintenance plan? Yes, that's in there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, can I have a roll call please? Well, we need a motion and a second. Oh, oh, oh I, I, thought, like I thought you made the motion. So, Sorry. Mr. Kolar, and a second. Do I get a second? I'll second it. Mr. Yeah. Steve. Diana, roll call, please. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Steve? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Steve? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. 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 Good luck. Congratulations, Mr. McCauley. Sorry. I'm going to really push my luck now. So, uh, you guys know, the building is on site. So, is there any way we could get started at our own risk? Um, before, I know the resolution will be adopted next month, but, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to get started on site if we could, understanding that if things change in the resolution or we're required to do different things, we'll do them. But we'd like to get started getting that building because it's sitting there and we've got the equipment coming in July. Uh, Mr. Uh, Collins? Uh, up to the board, but yes, the board could uh, make the resolution, the approval effective this evening to be memorialized uh, with them proceeding at their own risk, but they must comply with all other requirements of performance, which include construction permits and any details that the planning and construction department and engineering require to start work. So is there such a motion to add on to the resolution? Mr. Kohler? I'll make the resolution. And Mr. Schemann? I'll second it. So that will be effective this evening as the applicant authorized to proceed their own risk provided all other requirements of compliance are fulfilled. Uh, is there a, then a roll call, Diana? Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Steve? Yes. Mr. Coleman? 
Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank you all. Thank you. Take care. So we are going to uh, take a quick five-minute break, uh, and then we will be going into EFKA transport application number six uh, six nine five. We'll just do the tenant approval on that, all right? Uh, the next one shouldn't be that long. Be out for a bit. That's not the least on the road. He's back home. He's <laughs> <laughs> three. Yeah. That's how I believe it talks on the Israel. Well, what time are you going to work in the morning? Yeah. We'll turn to the people who are. 
where they see that some of it's growing up in Burnley Park by Royal Warren City. So we're, we're comparing the two. Yeah. <laughs> Umberto's in heaven. Technically, it's a new park, but that's the best pizza. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's good pizza. Have you ever had one that? Yeah, so New Hyde, it's in New Hyde Park. It's right on Jericho Turnpike. We have Umberto's. It's actually the pizzas of the New York Giants. When they played the Super Bowl, and when they won the Super Bowl, that was the night before. The guy, I was talking to the, to the guys who made the pizza. So they made the pizza. They had a private jet waiting on the tarmac. Made all the pies, loaded them into the car, drove them over, took them. <laughs> yeah, I don't get an entire Sicilian pie and bring it back with me.
right around between 330 and 430. All right. So our next and final application for the evening is EFKA Transport. Uh, number nine, oh, I'm sorry, 695. Busy man, Mr. Dunn. <laughs> 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 That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> $5 a gallon, you know, it ain't cheap What he does is he arranges to have one difficult application each night and then one easier one. <laughs> so that's, that's the way we go. We did the easy one. What's going on? <laughs> 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 Dr. Parker, I, I expected that from you. <laughs> Good evening, members of the board. Uh, John Erson, Shank Price, Smith and King. I am here for the applicant EFKA Transport. This is application 695, 12 Aaron Way. This is block 16001, lot 14. Um, do you want to uh, yeah. swear the witnesses, Mr. Collins? Yes, let's do everyone who might testify for the applicant. Uh, gentlemen and lady, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And please state your name and address by your last name and give us at least a business address. This is Michelle Wittestansky. Park, New Jersey. Michelle, please spell your last name. L-U-T-O-S-T-A-N-S-K-I. Thank you. And Jason Dunn. Jason Dunn, D-U-N-N with Dykstra Associates, 11 Lawrence Road, Newton, New Jersey. Uh, professional planner, landscape architect. The board will just confirm that for the record that the board recognizes that's uh, Jason Dunn's qualifications as a professional planner and certified landscape architect. Please go ahead. Yeah, members of the board, just by way of a very brief introduction, uh, the applicant here is the contract purchaser of this building and intends to occupy the building. If this application is granted, the closing is actually scheduled uh, in the next week or so. Um, this is an amended site plan application in your ED zone, and I'll introduce Mr. Dunn in just a moment. Uh, we're going to be proposing minimal changes to what was approved, and for the record, the original approval was in November of 2020, and the original approval was, the testimony during the original approval was that this would be 3,240 square feet of office space, and 11,344 11, square feet of warehouse space. What I'm gonna do is uh, introduce Mr. Dunn and ask Mr. Dunn to give the briefest overview of the site. Uh, obviously, we'll entertain questions from the board, but this is a previously approved application. And then I'll ask Mr. Dunn to highlight uh, the one physical change on the property that is proposed uh, as part of this application to accommodate the new owner. Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Um, I have on the easel uh, the same plan set that was submitted to the board for this amended site plan. Um, the property is on the corner of Park Lake Road and Aaron Way. It's in uh, some state of construction right now. Uh, I think, believe the curbing has been installed, the building has been erected, uh, and it still, I think, needs to be paved. The storm drainage is in. What we're asking here for permission to do tonight is to modify the site plan in one way, and that is to uh, change the, uh, the south end of the building, I'm sorry, the south end of the property near the south end of the building uh, to introduce a what I call a sunken loading dock or tailgate area so that a truck could pull to the building and the uh, unloading floor of the, of the, the box of the truck would be level with the loading dock. Um, that caused us to come here. The site plan waiver committee uh, was not comfortable granting it because it does or it could impact uh, traffic and circulation. I believe that's the reason they brought us here. Um, they also brought us here to um, introduce the, new, the user to make sure it's permitted and uh, that there would be no hazardous material transported or stored on site or used or anything. Um, 
the rest of the site remains the same. There's no increase in impervious. Uh, there's there's no new, nothing really new except for that loading dock. Uh, we are introducing a catch basin at the lowest point of that dock nearest the building, and that would be piped to the existing approved system. The drainage uh, is not impacted either. And Mr. Dunn, the impervious cover on the site is not impacted. No, um, at the previous application. For this property, 50, me, numbers right, 51.7% was approved. I'm sorry, got it mixed up. 57.1% was approved, and uh, that is not changing. Um, yes, that's right. That is why there are detention basins and infiltration ponds on this site um, to accommodate that extra uh, impervious. Yes. Why don't you, uh, since you're pointing to it, Mr. Dunn, why don't you reference what page you're on of the submitted plans? Okay. Um, this is page, uh, page two of six, like titled the layout plan, dated August 7, uh, 2020, and then a revision date of 4 4 2022. The uh, tailgate loading area is at the southern part of the building. It's an L shaped building, so it's at the first bay the southernmost part. Um, this rectangle here represents the loading area. And is that in the 401 or two? So is it just one loading bay or is it two? It's really for one loading bay because it, it, it only uh, will back up to one overhead door. Okay. Just trying to get an idea of the scale. Of it. <laughs> so of course on either side of the loading dock would be um, short retaining walls. Curves so that the car could go into it. And Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I, I don't have other questions for Mr. Dunn, but I was going to ask the owner a few questions, which I think will give some illustrative background to the board, um, and then the board can ask questions of both of them if that's okay. Sure. Um, Ms. Lus Lusstansky, am I doing am I doing yes. right? All right. Um, this is uh, this is your family business that's going to move into this property if approved. Correct. Okay. And uh, you're a vice president with uh, your family business. Correct. And you're familiar with the operations of the business. Yes. Okay. And so uh, the board is concerned about hazardous waste in this area, and they're certainly going to ask you what you're going to store in the warehouse. And the the answer is that you store dry goods only. So could you give the board uh, illustrative examples of the type of goods that you would bring in, stock, and then transport out? It would essentially be furniture, dry groceries, um, like chips. Oh, sorry. So, furniture, dry groceries, um, beverages like Gatorade, um, just Dry goods, essentially. So cardboard items? Yes, paper. Okay. okay. And uh, so generally, uh, only things that are dry goods or food items, never any hazardous waste? No. Okay. Never any oil, any solvents, no. nothing like that? No. Okay. And um, the board is also going to ask you, if I don't ask you first, um, your operations, you're currently operating in a different location? Correct. Okay, where's that location? Lincoln Park, okay. New Jersey. And you're moving here because it's a newer building and a nicer building and more efficient operations? Correct. Okay, but your operations are gonna be similar when you move. Yes. And your, you would estimate that your operations at this uh, building will generate uh, how many truck trips, how many trucks in and out a day? Three. Okay. And uh, your, uh, business uh, involves uh, warehousing, but you have trucks, and how many trucks do you have? Ten. Okay. And uh, so on any given day, uh, only three trucks on average would be coming to your facility? Yes. And the rest are on longer trips or deliveries or Correct. Um, some local, some over the road? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, the board would also be 
concerned about trucks and whether you do any maintenance on site? No. Okay. All the maintenance for your trucks is always going to be sent off site to the mechanic. Correct. Okay, and you have a mechanic and that's the way you do it now? Yes. Okay. And your business would not involve storing fuel of any kind? <coughs> no. Okay. I think that's probably all I have right now, Mr. Chairman, but uh, we're happy to answer questions of either the applicant or, or Mr. Dunn. So can I ask a question just for the edification of some new members that we might have that might not remember? Can you just go into a little more detail? So you store those items, what do you do with them? You, you buy them, what is the nature of your business? So essentially it they're stored um, and then re-delivered to a different location. So okay. just, just I'm sorry? Consumer, you're going wholesale. Uh, wholesale. So you would bring in one truck full of dry goods, Gatorade, just to illustrate. Correct. And you would put all that Gatorade in the warehouse, and then you would get uh, you would get directions from your customers to take one quarter of that Gatorade and deliver it someplace specific. Yes. And then the cycle continues. You bring in items. It break, you break it up into different size shipments. It goes to different places on different routes. Right, yes. But it's all wholesale. All wholesale. All yes. wholesale. Yes? Uh, I'd like to start with, I, I guess, Mr. Simmons or Mr. Simmons Tom, if you've got any questions or clarifications that you'd like to raise? Um, just a couple, Mr. Chairman, I'm reading from Mr. Simmons' May 10th, uh, 2022 report. Um, he brings up about the, uh, uh, the office uh, on the second floor, uh, office use, and whether that would increase any of the parking demand on site. Um, how, just for, from your operations, how many employees would you normally have on site on a normal day? Ten. And it's a sole, it's one tenant, so that's all that would be on site for your operation. Correct. Um, also, in, in Mr. Simmons' report, um, he was looking for testimony in regard to item number 10 on page 5 for fire protection. Would this storage facility require any additional sprinklers or anything to be added to the building? I. It will be for sprinkler, yes. Uh, I know at the last application we weren't sure that's what I mean. I guess, Mr. Chairman, I was here for the last application a couple years ago, so I knew it better. Show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good. The, uh, and then, really, it's a, um, Mr. Simmons' main report is, is a, it's almost a recreation of the original design report for this, so uh, most of the comments are just being carried forward that the applicant already agreed to. One item now, now that we have a tenant, we know who's going to be there. Um, in terms of signage, uh, building mounted and or ground mounted signage, I know that it has to be determined yet, but will there be signs added as part of this application or will that be a future application for the board? I believe that's going to be a future application. So there are no signage, there's no signage proposed as part of this application right now? As of right now. But we, we would... Um, Sometimes they can submit, if they comply with the ordinance they can just submit in accordance with the ordinance yeah. is that sort of what you expect uh, uh, Jason uh, we, we would uh, we're anticipating some building signage that would uh, conform with the ordinance requirements uh, there also was a freestanding sign I think that was approved and we need to locate that on the site make sure it's out of the site triangles that would be part of an application with the building department unless of course we don't comply then we're back here the, the goal, the expectation is you'll comply with the ordinance for the freestanding and for the sign on the facade. Right? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to come back to the board is what I'm getting at. If you need variances, then it does come back to the board. Okay. And uh, I think there was some comment in one of the review reports about whether the added Radi curb radii on a driveway was ever installed because there was an expectation that construction trucks would be required to
to traverse the driveway. It's not that important, but I just want to understand, was that ever installed or is it? Yes, as part of the former application, we had asked for relief, how do I put this, a little more relief on the impervious in order to accommodate a truck turn coming into the site. And the reason I think there's a little confusion is because this particular plan does not show that improvement, but it's the entrance coming off of Park Lake Road. This turning radius was increased to, I believe, like 35 feet radius, and that was constructed that way. That would show up in the as-built. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, we have nothing else to add. Okay. I don't believe there was anything submitted from Catherine. I just have a simple question. So you're really a repacking for the food industry? Is that what you do mostly? Servicing restaurants and delis? It's more of storage. We don't repack the freight. Okay. So you just temporarily store a pallet and then the pallet goes out? Yeah. Okay, so you're not breaking it down and then selling small quantities? No. Mostly the food industry? No, it varies. I would say maybe once in a while it's canned goods or a Gatorade, but it's more furniture. Okay. Diane, if we can open it up to the board. Just one question about the operation. Would any of the drivers ever be sleeping on site? No. Okay. I have a few. Hours of operation? I would say it's from 8 a.m. to 5.36 p.m. Okay. You said roughly three tractor trailers a day? Yes. Box trucks? So you bring tractor trailers in and out by tractor trailer or in by tractor trailer, out by box truck or van? No, in by tractor trailer and out by tractor trailer. So it would be three in and three out or just three total? Yes. So three in, three out. Okay. And then again, for the same thing with forklifts, I'm assuming? Yes. Diesel? Yes. Yes. Okay. I missed that. Forklifts will be propane? Diesel. Diesel. No, propane. Propane. Yeah. It's usually, well. Indoor is usually propane. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. And then you'll have, I'm sure, a spill protection bill for your trucks and everything else? Yes. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I have a few quick questions. Tractor trailers, just give me an order of magnitude. We're talking full-scale tractor trailers, not the 40-footers? Yeah, 40-footers. Yeah. And you said you had a fleet of 10 of them? Mm-hmm. So three will be out, three will be, will you be storing trucks there? And how many trucks on site will be there at any given time, given time or cycle? Six, seven? Like all, if they were all there? Yeah, I mean, will you be storing 10 trucks or you'll always be <laughs> rotating three? Well, I'm just trying to get a standard flow of truck storage at the facility. So, so Mr. Sylvester is, is, is trying to understand, first of all, let's, let's go back. Some of your trucks are on long haul routes, right? Correct. Okay. So when they leave your facility, they might be going to multiple states or a couple hundred miles or whatever they're doing. Yes. Okay. So they might not come back for a week? If not more, yeah. Okay. So uh, you've given the board an estimation that you know uh, an average of three trucks would come in and three trucks would go out. Given the fact that the trucks are rotating and some are on long haul, what's an average of the trucks that would be actually on site out of your 10 on any average day? Maybe five. Okay. I thank you, Council, for clarifying. Yeah, the, the modification area, um, what's the depth of that? How, how far down do you need to dig down and get that degraded? for the back of the truck to 
you're going down four or five feet. And then the space next to it or adjacent to it, are you putting any type of, yeah, right there, that, are you any, any type of wall barrier? Or, or? There's, a, there's a raised curb so that a vehicle could go into the. Yeah. And what's the, what's the height of that? Um, I'm not certain of that detail, actually. I want to say it's 12 inches. They could see. That's all I'm thinking yeah, here. Mm -hmm. All right. Especially since it's on the end. It may, yeah. it may, yeah. need a, it may be a construction code around. requirement to have a full rail. A, 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 a wall or a, a ladder or some kind or of ballast. barrier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's right. just four feet the deepest, and of course it gets more yeah. shallow. Yeah, it's drains up, but at its deepest point, you can't and trip and fall down four feet, is what we're trying to say. I also would know that there's not uh, pedestrian traffic. Of that what's, what's adjacent to it? Is there another spot, another bay? or yes, there's another bay where it's right. So, so there, is there maybe a guard? Can you put a guardrail, uh, a guardrail or some type of buffer to? So the proposal is, uh, I didn't have Mr. Matthew testify, but the proposal is eight, uh, about a 10 inch curb dividing uh, the, the, the sunken bay from the parking area. If there's a, a different building code, we would comply. If there's a different recommendation, we'll, we'll comply. Kind of huh? the, the idea of the pedestrian uh, is uh, a 10 inch curve, is, that's, that's a pretty high curve. That's, that's not really a bountiful I'm thinking curve. vehicle, not pedestrian. Yeah, and I was looking at, I was thinking uh, pedestrian from both sides. Um, it's 10 inches. Um, the, the wall will be 10 inches on both sides or just on the traffic side? On the level side. On the, on the four foot depth side. On the four foot depth side, but on both sides of the of the ramp going down, because the if I'm looking at the exhibit, the uh, yeah the, the spaces. Let me get the spaces correct. Spaces yes. 56 and 57. Um, there's a drop off from space 56 into the four foot hole, and then there's something here as well. So. The, um, the, We'll, we're proposing the curve on both sides. On curve. both sides. Okay. Um, and you'll be backing in a trailer, a 40 foot trailer into that space? I have a little back up, just okay. because I have two more questions. Um, so if you're saying five, do you have parking for five traffic trailers? Yes. Yes, yeah, so there, there's room on the site for five. Okay. You have. Four bays we could park them in. So, so ten, you have 10 45 foot parking spots there? No, not designated. No. So, if all 10 trucks are there, where are they going? They're not going in front of the building. No, that's all detention basin. Right, I mean, I'm just saying, so where are they going? Yeah, we're, we're not expecting all 10 trucks to be there. Yeah, I think that's where we're going. If you have a fleet of 10, for some, for some reason, the entire fleet's back at the yard, you don't have the capacity to necessarily store 10 at this point. Um, we understand you're circulating them and at any given time you may have an average five coming in. I'm just more, uh, so that I, I, I don't know how you want to address that. Can we address that well, in you know, the condition? The act, well, the site plan should show it. Uh, in other words, there should be, there's no shown parking spaces for tractor trailers on this site plan. So Jason maybe could change the site plan. I don't quite see where four are, but. Okay. You're gonna have four, you got four because you got four bays, right? How many bays are there? I'll call them long bays. But yeah. So you're gonna, you, they they can really like, park can four in the bays. Can you fit 40 foot tractor trailers plus their tractor at the same time? Because it looks like they conflict with one another. So Jason, you gotta lay this out on a site plan. And then there can't be more than that because the other spaces are for cars. We would possibly use some of the parking spaces for autos for the trucks if it would ever come to that. And, how, and then how many employees are in the front yard? You can't park tractor trailers in the front yard. 
No, no, it wouldn't be in the front yard, not where the parallel park is. Yeah, yeah the we're angle park. So we, we, we declined to submit an exhibit post hearing that illustrates where parks would, where trucks would park on a maximum basis. And the applicant, I mean, just because they have 10 trucks now, they might have eight in the future, they might have 15. And if they only have room for four or five or six on the site, they have to find, just try to make sure you have to be over park. the road or they have to find a place to, uh, to, to park them between routes, right? So, uh, but we're, we, we're comfortable with uh, uh, submitting an exhibit that will show the maximum truck parking and, and agreeing that they would not be parked in the front yard. And my last question, how many employees are relocating to this facility? About 10. 10? All right, so you'll factor that into your, your plan, right? right. For both the employees and potential or ups, upside of the maximum of 10 trailers, if necessary. Correct. All right, no further questions. Thank you. Um, can you just do me a favor, and just for my own, to make sure I wrote this down right? You said how many square feet of office space? Uh, the original testimony in the application in November of 2020 was 3,240 square feet of office space and 11,344 square feet of warehouse space. Okay. And the office space is obviously upstairs. Right, and you're the only one that's going to be using that. So you're not looking to sublet that or to have any other businesses there that might generate more employees, right? It's just your employees, your place. This is going to be for your business, right? Correct. Okay. So to make sure, because when we get involved with all these trucks, there's going to be nowhere. I'm nervous that there won't be enough spots to accommodate. Correct. Well, there still has to be, I think there was a requirement of, what, 42? They're saying they have more parking spaces than required, but that should be confirmed, Jason. So you, you still have to have your required parking spaces, even if you are not using them, because it could be sold to another user. So can we go over that, Jason? In other words, sure. how many parking spaces do you have? If you, they used to have, they used to use the bays for uh, passenger car parking. It was kind of unusual in the prior approval. So, Jason, what is the number of parking spaces that result if all the bays are used for four trucks and you now have, what, have do, you, do you meet the ordinance requirement if that happens? Yes, we're, um, the parking on this site is uh, far above what's required by the ordinance. For, ordinance, which is based on that building areas, uh, is, requires 42 spaces and there are 64 spaces on site. Um, but I think what Mr. Collins is asking about is the conflict of some of those spaces are located in front of the bays, but because they're the only tenant, they have control over who parks where and if they need to be out of the way to let a truck out. So that's why we're still counting those as part of the 64. I'm just saying in my mind, I'm imagining the, the uh average of a regular parking space, right? If you take the width of that, and obviously the length of it is not fitting a tractor trailer, so right. you have to park it across all these spaces. So I'm trying to, in my mind, think, okay, 45, what's the width? Nine, is it nine and a half? Nine foot sp uh, spaces. Nine, nine, nine no, feet? I was just asking what the width of the tractor trailer is. Oh, that's uh, less than eight. No, no, I'm asking about a parking oh, space. Oh, nine. Nine, right? Yes. Okay, I thought it was nine and a half. Right. Okay, so if we do the math, the tractor trailer you said is 45 feet. You asked that question before. Well, it's just trailer. So if we do the math, that's five spots, mm -hmm. right? So five spots times five trucks. Now we're starting to get up there where I'm just nervous that your employees are going to have enough places to park as well. I just want to make sure that we're covered. So even though I know that you're saying, yes, you know, you're, you're in line with what's required, it's required for cars, not tractor trailers across it. So I just want to make sure that, am I making sense? Right. Saying this yeah. right? I, I, absolutely. So, so okay. Mr. Dunn, um, let's, let's, answer, let's answer Councilwoman Quinn's question directly. Um, if we had five trucks parked on site, would we still have uh, more than enough spots for 10 employees? 
Yes, uh, because there's 21 spots in front of the building that are angular. I'm not worried about five trucks, I'm worried about 10. And I know you say, you know, there might be, but there might be seven. There might be, you know, we don't know. And the way the gas prices are going, you that know somebody, you're going to need to park there. I'm just trying to look out for the owner to make sure that she can, she's got a fleet of 10 trucks, she needs to put them somewhere. You're obviously going to have to reconfigure the parking uh, schematic here as far as how you're going to be, how you're going to outlay the number of spots for the employees and also accommodate for upward to three or ten trucks maximum or at least five on any given time. Correct. Do you really need to say that there'll be ten trucks parked here? I mean, if, if you have another site in Lincoln Park, can we just limit the number of trucks to five or four? She, Maybe you, Mrs. Miss L. Are you still keeping the key park or are you moving everything up here? No, we're moving everything. You're moving everything. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have comedy. So if you have 10 trucks and you want them to park here at, at any given time, you have to adjust your site plan to deal with the required minimum parking spaces of 42 for people. And you can't count those as passenger car parking spaces. You've got you to change, you change the layout of the backyard park. Um, so I would like to just ask the owner, um, do you intend to ever have more than four trucks parked on site? Because the whole line of question has come from the board assuming that old 10 might end up parked there at one time. So I'd like to hear from the owner if that's part of there or if, it, or if she has plans or the ability to leave some of the trucks at the mechanic's place or if they have relationships with someone who has off-site off -site parking. So let's let's I, I think this this might uh, answer the question. Um, uh, we're anxious to have an approval tonight, if possible, because we have closing next week. Mm -hmm. um, but the board needs a condition that it can enforce and work with. So I think that we would be we would be comfortable to say that we would not have more than four trucks parked outside at any given time. Uh, and if for some reason that number changes in the future to five, we'll have to come back and give you a new diagram <coughs> and show you how it would work. Four trucks outside at any given time. Will that work for you? Perfect. And not parked in front. Again, I don't want to be the difficult one. I'm just looking out for you. Because oh, I, I want to make sure that you have enough space. This is your business. These are your trucks. And I don't want you to submit to something that, that all of a sudden something happens and you need to store them, and you can't. Right. And, and, and Council Quinn, the, the inquiry is, is fine and appreciated because they also have to know what the rules are, right? And so if she knows that the rules, uh, this business knows that the rules are no more than four trucks outside at any given time, and if for some reason that doesn't work in the future, they have to come back for an amended and propose to you how that would work, we'll do that. But What's the, the total base? Four bases. There's actually the other side. I there's actually there was, eight bays. I was going to say, I thought there was eight bays. Yeah. So if they took a truck and put it in front of each bay, that's eight trucks, right? They took a truck. They won't still fit. parked outside. They won't fit. They won't fit. The okay. geometry is at best for cars. Yeah. That was what the design was originally, cars. But it doesn't say what the measurement was. Okay, I was just trying to help. All right, so, so you're, with, you're, let, you're let's go ahead with that. I understand you want to move forward. I think originally there were box trucks. That's why. Box it's trucks, not tractor trailers. Yeah. I, I that one, makes sense. I have one question for the attorney. Would the applicant mind putting limits on the amount of idling? No more than 15 minutes on the trucks? Yeah, but some, I want that That's in the resolution to be to be enforceable in the resolution. I'm not the owner. Yeah. 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 They, they have to comply with that. That's an ordinance requirement, right? Is it a municipal ordinance? Yeah. No, no, it's not a municipal ordinance. No, full treatment. So, would, so if it's not, yeah, he's, he's asking John if the applicant will accept the condition that there'll be a, no more than 15 minutes of idling of any trucks on site. Is yes, that, is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We're so close to our wellhead here. 
you know, the, the testimony that they're not going to be storing hazardous material, that there's no um, uh, drains in the building that are going to connect up, you know, that's, that's nice. Having a spill prevention mm -hmm. plan, just like we did the last time, might be a, a good normal to have going forward. Well, all of these drains on Aaron Way hook up to a, a septic system down at the end, and that's sitting right on our well head. So I'm not worried about it. They can't have, under the ordinance, they can't have any hazardous material. But uh, diesel trucks have diesel in them. And they, they don't carry just six gallons. They carry hundreds of gallons. And accidents happen. I was thinking we could have a, a, some kind of a spill maintenance so plan we're, or program or something. We're, we're willing, in, in, we're willing in to submit. Effect. And the township, and uh, I wanted to know if, if that was part of the process before or not. I just don't remember when we did the original. I don't remember that was part of the original approval. I don't think it was either. No, but no, we were talking about the, 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 the drainage on the street and that they were all hooked up to each other. Now across the street and everything we did have some problems and we, put, we cleared it up with the diesel. Remember when the guy was pumping diesel gas across the street? So yeah, well, we won't get into that. Yeah, but let's just find out if we should have at least a, a maintenance program for a spill or an accident. Yeah, your, your best manager in practice, your facility. But that's my Township, is it possible that instead of every single applicant trying to figure out their own, that the township establishes guidelines? It's a standard or something. No, it's, and, a, it's, it's a, a DEP. It's a DEP program of spill prevention. It is. Different containment control plans. Okay. They're pretty much set forth in regulations of the DEP. It's not. It's a, it makes some sense here because there is the potential, but not very likely because they know have no hazard. It's an SPP so they don't have to come up with their own and pay more professionals and more No, money. they do. They do you because just have to say that they have to no, it, it, to it does own. require. It does require. It does. There's it's, it's nominal. Uh, a, f a firm, their their consultants or engineers could do an SPPP plan to Tom's point, which would accommodate and all these concerns about in the event there's a release, one of the trucks, one of the hydraulic lines break. That there's a preventative measure measure in place to mitigate the issue before it goes down the drain into so, the septic system. So what can we do? Because she's trying to close an expense. Oh, you just it's just a condition. It's a condition. They prepare. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah. So they, you can they, still they, move forward. Yes. Yeah. You'll just we, get this done. And, and, and we agree. No, no, this is just something that they have to put in plan before. That's fine. Get. I have nothing to do with their closing. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I just want to make sure because it's she's trying to. Are, are your are your trucks are your trucks owned and operated by you, or you have independent third party operators? Owned and operated by. Oh, your drivers as well. Yes. So you control. You don't have independent operators coming in. Correct. Okay. That makes it a little neater. Great. Normal routine is no washing the trucks are maintaining them on on site. Go on. Okay? That's my only question. Thank you. I have no questions. Uh, no, I think you've addressed everything. I think uh, I would like to, again, as we've talked about, the, the four trucks is going to be important just because you're not going to have the parking capacity for the 18 wheelers. Uh, but no, no other questions from, from my perspective. Can we make the motion? Or do you need to open to the public and oh, get questions and testimony. I don't think there's any, but let's just make sure we do. So we'll open it up to the public. No questions from the public. No responses from the public. So we'll bring it back to board. I did tell Luke that so he, he should object to every application as possible that we drag him out. <laughs> <laughs> it's still okay, Luke. Go ahead and object. <laughs> so can we make the motion or something? Uh, yes, uh, when you're ready, it'll be, uh, you might consider a motion to approve the uh, amended site plan of EFK, EFKA truck, uh, transport as discussed this evening. Uh, Effective this evening, so the applicant can proceed provided all other requirements of compliance are met. The uh, general conditions are the, the review report of Mr. Simmons and the comments of Mr. Matelski here tonight. The uh, 
testimony of the applicant. The spill prevention and containment control plan shall be prepared by the applicant and posted prominently on the, on the work site and a copy provided to the township engineer, the board engineer and the board, the planning department. They'll provide a uh, parking exhibit for a truck and trailer, tractor trailer parking for a maximum of four trucks and tractors on the site uh, in the four bays and not in the front yard. Any more than four tractor trailers and trucks, uh, then the applicant shall return to the board for an amended site plan review and approval, but shall still provide the zoning required park, uh, car parking space requirements. They will uh, install signage in accordance with the ordinance, or, uh, or if there's any variances, they will return to the planning board for variance approval. There will be the applicant accept the condition. There'll be no idling of trucks uh, longer than five, 15 minutes. Uh, the applicant offered, and there's a condition that there'll be no washing of trucks or maintenance of vehicles on site. Uh, the condition that there'll be no hazardous. The conditions of the prior approval remain in effect, and the confirmation exists that, that by the applicant here tonight there'll be no storage of hazardous materials and no disposal of hazardous materials on the site in the septic system or on the stormwater management system. And this is important because the township's well is on the adjacent property and the stormwater system drains to the stormwater detention basin that is right next to the municipal well for millions of gallons of water supply as highlighted by the water department's review and the prior conditions. Is there such a motion? Mr. Chairman, may I just make one comment? Um, Mr. Mr. Collins correctly stated four trucks, but four trucks outside I would ask the board to consider. If the warehouses are full, they could put a truck inside. I, I just don't want it, I don't want it to be four trucks total. It was four trucks outside. That's that's what we proposed. Does the building have the capacity? I didn't think the, the building inside. I didn't think the building was designed to receive trucks inside. That's what the testimony we received last time at least. But I think it is possible to put a truck inside. Through what door? I don't think I don't see doors, that. the doors of the original trailer. design were were basic. I mean I I'm going the, by memory. Not but fire codes. You're not have fire, fire codes aren't gonna allow that. Yeah, plus you would Especially not want not next to food. Food. Okay. And you wouldn't want that in a bay. I'm told that I was incorrect. It's not a tractor trailer, it's the tractor to go inside to be stored without the trailer. That's where all the hazard is. Well, the fact that it has the gas. But, 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 if, but if that's your concern, to be inside on the concrete floor in the uh, controlled environment is actually better. How do we do that? What's the, what's the width of the building again? Which door would you put it in? These three, four bays here? Either one of those, we could get it in? The garage door is in it. The width of the doors are 14 feet. Oh, okay. So it's more like a garage door, almost like an actual bay that's the size of the AP Right. That's the width of the AP right. okay. I would say that as long as they comply with any other resulting uh, regulations. It does give the flexibility because if they have one that, uh, a tractor that's not being used that week, put it inside, close the garage door, it's not a nuisance to the neighborhood, it's on concrete, there's no uh, issue there, and we don't uh, back up the park more. Mm -hmm. no, I understand. Would it be easier to take the trucks apart and take the cabs and have them fit into spaces? And yes. Take the cargo and put it somewhere else. We're a little, get, yeah, we're a little apprehensive with the suggestion to put a truck in, whether it's one, one turns into two, or we have a future applicant wanting to store 
two or three or five or ten. I really don't want to set precedence with that type of model, not knowing what other ordinance will or will not allow that to happen. Yeah. I don't know if that even that could be a fire code issue right out of the gate. Putting you got you you know you got diesel, you got certain capacity of diesel in those trucks. You got emissions. That you got ventilation issues. So I I don't want to speak to that, but but she's but but, but this could work. I mean. This is brainstorming, mm -hmm. so bear with me because it might not sound completely right because I'm not really that good at tractor trailers. I don't really know that much about them. But if she's going to take them apart anyway, right? You're taking the you're taking the truck off of the, what it's hauling. The trailer off the cab. Okay, so you're taking the trailer off the cab. The cab is obviously not where the problem is in getting into a parking spot. So if you took ten cabs or eight cabs or whatever it might be, the problem we're having is we're thinking you have to store the two things together for 45 feet. If she takes them, if there, she's going to take it apart anyway to put one in the building, then she could technically get a lot more of the cabs and then just have to worry about the containers. You're better off to put the containers in the building than you are the cab because I what can that's happen? That's what she was suggesting, no? No, she the was cab. saying it backwards. Reverse. Containers won't fit. The, the containers building. won't fit in the building. Now look, I, I think where trailer will not fit. Where Councilwoman building. Quinn's going with it is that there's por parking is configured to store. We were looking at storing the f the, the cab and the trailer right. but together. together. But if you broke it down, you may be able to be more efficient by storing a certain amount of trailers. You're going to have a certain amount at the base, certain amount in parking spots, and then stacking your your cabs. In, in, in the space as well. You may be more efficient in consolidating that versus looking at the interior building as an alternative. All right. Again, I don't know any, I don't know much about trucks, but four, four trailers outside and the possibility of one trailer inside. Right. Possibility. One, one cab. One cab. No, yeah, but then there's a trailer, trailer that came with that cab that has to be parked. Yeah, what are you going to do with the trailer with, then? Yeah, well, you, you haven't Okay, Tom. You haven't dealt with the trailer that's associated with that cab, and theoretically five other trucks with the trailer. So, and I don't believe this building was designed to receive an open door for a tractor trailer, of even just a tractor to go in. If that's been built that way, I guess we'd like to hear about it. I, I don't Mr. believe Maggio's that was contemplated here. I mean, in Mr. The Maggio did not testify that they were going to have any trucks. In, inside the building, it was cars parked in front of the garage doors to get to their parking count, not trucks. Uh -huh. So this amendment is focused on this applicant. If they really were talking about having trucks and tractor trailers parked inside, that's a pretty substantial amendment that has never been proposed in the past. Yeah, and I, I uh, obviously I respect Mr. Collins' comments, but doesn't feel like that big of an amendment in the respect that there's garage doors on the plan big enough to allow a cab to come in. They have cabs. If they were going to store, it would seem to me that the township would prefer that if we had an extra cab for the weekend and we <coughs> had room to put it inside, uh, it would seem better aesthetically. Uh, we would comply with any codes. Uh, something stored inside is safer something stored on concrete is safer, stored in a sprinkler building. Um, so for all those reasons, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I would argue that there's no barrier to them uh, opening one of the garage doors and moving a cab in for the weekend. Uh, I just, I don't see what, I don't see what the regulation or barrier or ordinance would be that would prevent that. Where's the trailer go? That's with the car. Yeah, where's, where's the trailer go? They left it to be filled at the, at the client site. But she said they come they in and come out. come all the way back to... You're not going to come back so empty and then come back up. I know what diesel is, about $7 a gallon <laughs> now. So <laughs> you're not going to bobtail back and forth. <laughs> I, I agree with Ms. I agree with Mr. Collins that it's going. You're you're creating more of a significant condition here than what was being proposed with that alternative. Because then, then in theory, you're looking at 20 units. You have you have you have 10 trailers, 10 cabs. You have 20 pieces of equipment. Whether we restrict it to five, which is then 10, we're playing semantics with just conceptual numbers, not knowing how your operation is going to work 
on any given day, week, or month. Can well, things the testimony change? Given was we want to make sure you have the capacity four, four, so you four, can four store outside. it. So, sorry, I mean. Maximum of four. Yeah, so you have four trailers, so, four cabs outside, maximum. Correct. Correct. Right. Well, that's, that's, so, that's what the board's comfortable with. That's the, like, it's already been dictated as, a, as an approval. If you're not comfortable with this change, they can. I, I'm not comfortable with this change. So then, is there a second, a motion and a second, and it will be approved tonight now? So we What should, are we making a motion on? No, I'm What I dictated into the record before, which was four. Okay. Outside. In I'm the comfortable. Bay, in the bays only, not in the front yard. And if they want to change, they got to come back for a second. So they're not storing them in. Inside. Not storing them inside. inside. Well, it sounds like that's the opinion of the board. So if, like is it. that the opinion of the board? So that's the opinion of the board. Yeah, so I will make the second the so that you can close next week, and then you're just going to unfortunately have to come back um, if you need more. I mean, I want to make sure that you're safeguarded there, but I don't think putting one in is, is even addressing the whole problem because there's still four more. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And there's a trailer. <laughs> and there's a trailer to worry about, yeah. And that's 45 feet. The cab is an extra 10 or whatever. Huh. So I'll second it. The, the way you said it. I don't know if there was a first. You can make the motion. Yeah, I'll make the first. Pete, Pete I thought he made the motion. Pete, he made well, the motion. motion. Puts it out. Somebody has okay. to make the motion. So Pete did it. Pete made the motion, second by Christine. I'm going to second it. Diana, roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Zippy? Yes. Mr. Sylvester? Yes. Council Yes. Dr. Parker? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you can't work that out, don't close. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely close. But I'm just saying, I think breaking them apart is the best. Yes. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Take care. Good luck. All right. So that concludes EFKA, tra EFKA transport. At this time, hold on one second, guys. Uh, we're going to open up to the public for any comments on matters not on the agenda and matters not related to hearings on an application for development. No comments from the public. Uh, any other board business? I don't think there's any other board business that we have this evening. So, somebody would like to, to make a motion to adjourn? I'll second. Second. Getting adjourned. Yeah.